Good day and thank you for joining us. So, last week's lesson we covered straight line graphs, specifically how we would use that in table method to find out our different points and how we would plot that onto our Cartesian plane, okay? So, what we'll be doing this week is we'll be looking at straight line graphs once again, but we will be looking at how to get to the equation of the straight line graph and how to solve for different aspects of the straight line graph. Okay, so if we can remember, what we have here is we have um, y and x, which could be our coordinates that is given to us, right? So say if they gave us a coordinate like 3 or 0, 3 would be our x, and 0 would be our y, okay? Our m over here, our m is going to be our gradient, and our c is going to be our y-intercept, okay? So... We're going to look at how we can how we can look at solving each one of these with information that is given to us. Okay, so what we're first going to look at is getting the graph or the or the equation to its standard form. Okay, so looking at this, when we're trying to get a graph to its standard form, they would give us something like this. They'd give us 3y plus 2x is equal to 6. Then they'd ask us to write this equation in the standard form of the straight line graph. Okay, So if I'm going to look at the equation over here, I can see that it's y is equal to mx plus c. So I know that there's a y here and there's an x. And then we know that c would be just represented by one constant or normal number. Okay, So... What I'm going to do is, I'm going to look, okay, so y is on the left-hand side of this equal sign, so we'll keep y here. Then we'll put the equal sign in. Then 2x, you can see it's gone, uh, it's on the other side, so this 2x has to go over, okay? Because this x is over here, and once it goes over, we have negative 2x, right? And that's, e sorry, that is plus 6, okay? Because remember, the c stays on the right-hand side, and here is our c. Once we've gotten to this point, we can see that everything is in its proper position. But there's one small thing is that y is not in its simplest form. y is not by itself, okay? So, you can see here, y is left just like this with no coefficient in front of it, okay? So, what we need to do is get rid of this 3. And the way we're going to do that is by dividing by 3. But what you do to the one side, you need to do to the other side as well. Okay, so each term on this side is going to be divided by 3 as well. So once we do that, we'll get y, because the 3's cancel each other out. And we can't really divide 2 by 3, so we'll be left with minus 2 over 3x. You can see how we've come to this fraction, right? So because we can divide by 3, we put it into its fraction form and left it just like this. And that would be plus... 2. So that's basically it over here and just looking at the different things just going to help you with the rest of the questions we can see our gradient we found is now equal to negative 2 over 3x and our y-intercept is equal to 2. So that's just looking at identifying the different information but this is really the important part over here which was the standard form converting the this equation into the standard form down here so moving on what we're going to be looking at now is how we would get to solving this over here how we would solve the gradient okay so let's look at this so we know the gradient is represented by m, right? So our formula for our gradient is going to be, and it's always going to be this, it's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which could also be said as change in y over change in x. And the change is represented by y2 minus y1 or x2 minus x1, okay? So... 
usually if they're saying determine the gradient or the slope of the line, so gradient and slope is the same thing, they would, they would give us two sets of coordinates, okay? So the first set of coordinates given to us in this case is going to be negative 2 and 1. And the second one is going to be 3 and 4. Okay? So these are the two points given to us. And now what we need to do is substitute these values into our equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I'll make this bracket over here represent number 1. Okay? So I'll just put... The, something above it that's going to help me identify it so i'm putting above here this is number one and this is number two okay and this is how we can substitute it into our equation because you can see there's y2 minus y1 so i need to know that this is y2 over here and this is y1 why because this y is in the brackets that i've marked as number two and this one is in the brackets i've marked number one so that's y1 so moving on to substitution We're going to look at it. So we first need y2, which we said was 4, right? Because remember, y is on the right hand side in the bracket. So we have 4 minus y1. That is number 1 over there. So it's 4 minus 1 at the top. Let me just put the m back in there. Um, then we look at x2. You can see here, x2 over here is positive 3, right? Minus. Now we can see x1 is negative 2. So we'll substitute it in as that, but obviously in brackets because we have another negative over there. So what you see that will happen is, so let's just do 4 minus 3. We get 3 over 3. So this is a minus times a minus, okay? Because we are minusing by a minus, that becomes a positive, okay? Because we've substituted in the negative 2. So it's become positive 2. So therefore m is going to be equal to 3 over 5. Which will be our gradient. Okay. So now that we've learned how to work out the gradient. That will set us up perfectly to work out the rest of the equation. But we'll look at that in. A later exercise okay or a later question so here for lay um for the next part we'll be looking at the dual intercept method so when it comes to the dual intercept method what they'll be asking you to work out is going to be the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Hence it being called the dual-intercept method because we are working out two different types of intercepts of the straight line graph. Okay. So how do we go about doing this? Let's say we are given an equation like, let me just get this in here quickly. So we're given an equation like y is equal to a half x plus 4. Okay, so let's look at the information we have here. We have the gradient, which is equal to a half, and we have the y-intercept because we know that c is the y-intercept which is equal to 4. So we already know that we have the y-intercept in this case but they want us to work out the y-intercepts. How are we going to do that? So basically when we're trying to solve for the x-intercept we'll make y equal to 0 in the equation and when we're solving for the y-intercept we'll make x equal 0 in the equation. Okay. So once we do that, then we can go ahead and work out what each intercept is. So let's look at how we do that. So we're going to work out, let's say we'll work out the x-intercept first. So what we need to do is make y equal 0 in this equation. So here's y over here. So I'll say y is equal to 0. 
which is equal to a half x plus 4. Okay, so what we need to do now is solve for x. So what I'm going to do to solve for x is I'm going to get x by itself. So we'll leave a half x by itself over here. And 4 will go over, become negative 4. So I'm just going to switch it around like this so it's a bit easier to look at. So it will be half x minus, I mean is equal to negative 4. So now we've got in here, what we, have to, what we have left to get rid of with the x is this half, right? And how do we get rid of a half? We times by 2, okay? So we're going to times by 2, which is the one side, and the other side as well. And what you're left off with is just x, and that's equal to negative 4 times 2 will give me negative 8, okay? So once you've done that, now you've found your x-intercept. So what you'll do is write underneath it here. Let me just put that in color, actually. You write negative 8 and 0, which will be the x-intercept of your graph. Now let's bring the equation here quickly. And we go x plus 4. So now we're going to work out the y-intercept. And here our instruction says that our y-intercept, we need to always make x equal to 0. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to write out here y is equal to half. So now x, we're making equal 0. So we've substituted that in there. Plus 4. So what's going to happen is now we'll have y is equal to, so half times 0, anything times by 0 is equal to 0. And we're just left with the positive 4. So you can see there, it corresponds with the equation where, remember, c is our y-intercept, which is equal to 4. Now we've worked out the y-intercept and found that y is also equal to 4 in this case. So we know that we've gotten to the right answer. So now we can write out our y-intercept as 0 and 4. Okay? And also you might be wondering why, when it comes to intercepts, we always have a 0 in there. That is because when we are on the y-axis, when so here's our x-intercept, when we are on the x-axis, y is equal to 0. And here we have our y-intercept. So when we are on the y-axis, then x is equal to 0. Okay? So that's just a bit of a point for you to remember there. So let's come back to here where we worked out the gradient, okay? Let's say... Um, from this point, we had to work out the rest of the equation, okay? So, we've worked out the gradient. So, what our equation looks like right now is y, sorry. What our equation looks like right now is y is equal to 3 over 5 x plus c, okay? So, Looking at this right now, we need to find out one more thing, right? Because if we look at any equation, let me just see if we have it in one of the examples. Oh, sorry. We can see here in any equation, in its standard form, we have the gradient and we have the y-intercept. So all that we are missing in this equation over here is the y-intercept over there, right? So what we're going to do to find that is use information that is given to us. So we have the gradient. What are we missing? We just need x and y. And where can we get that x and y? From any point um, or plotted point in the graph that is given to us. And what better to use then? What has been given to us right over here. So we can use either one of these. We can use negative 2 and 1 or we can use 3 and 4. I'll use 3 and 4, okay? So now what's going to happen is we're going to substitute in these values. So 4 we know is y. So we can say 4 in place of y over there, which is going to be equal to 3 over 5. So x over here is 3. Okay. And that is going to be plus c. So you can see now, once we substitute in that specific point, 
or that coordinate. The only unknown that we have is C, therefore we can successfully solve for C in this case over here. Right? Okay, so let's move on with this example. So we left with 4 as per normal over here. So now we have to do 3 over 5 times 3. So I'm just going to times this 3 into the numerator. So I'll have 9 over 5, right? Which is a fraction I can't really simplify down further than that. And then we're left with plus C. Now we need to get C by itself. So we'll have... We'll have 4 minus 9 over 5. Okay? So now we need to work out 4C. So we can just make that a whole fraction over there. It's 4 over 1 minus 9 over 5. So I'm going to do a calculation here on the side. Lowest common denominator will be 5 over here. 5 divided by 1 is 5. 5 divided by 5. I mean, sorry. 5 divided by 1 is 5. 5 times 4 is going to give me 20. And that's going to be minus 9, okay? Because the numerator, the denominator is the same here, so we just keep the numerator. And so that will give me a final fraction here of 11 over 5. So, therefore, we can write in our answer over here. So we have 11 over 5, which can also be written as 2.2, okay? So, now that we've done that, we have no more unknowns, okay? So, what we're going to do is just write down the equation in its final form, which is going to be, obviously, y is equal to mx plus c, so we'll have y is equal to m, which was 3 over 5 that we worked out, x plus 11 over 5. And just like that, we have our final equation for this graph, okay? So, very important things to note when we are working out the equation for a straight line graph is, if they're asking us to work out the gradient, we work out the gradient. If they're asking us to work out the y-intercept, we work out the y-intercept. But in the case where they're asking us just to solve for the equation, we need to use information that's given to us to work it out. So... Let's say in the case they gave you the gradient and a set of points, you do this method over here, right? Let's say they gave you points and the y-intercept. We'd use those points to find the gradient, okay? So we're just using what is given to us to find out what we do not have, like we did in this case right over here. So anyways, that is going to do it for today's lesson. I really hope that this helped you um, in understanding how to find out the equations of the straight line graph and that you are able to apply it effectively. Thank you very much.